Hey everybody, welcome to my RV7 slash Pete and Pole Air Camper YouTube channel. I've been trying to make this intro video now for probably a half hour and I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet and to the point. The reason I'm making these videos is because one, I like to build and two, I really enjoy helping other people. So these videos will show you how I am building my airplane. Now, I'm not saying that I'm an expert, because I'm not, and I'm not saying that the way that I've built my airplane is the way that you should build yours. These are just for entertainment purposes. Maybe um, when you watch these, it will spark some ideas in your own mind on ways that you want to build your airplane. The other reason I'm making these videos is because I need help building my RV7. I, I can build the airplane myself. Financially, it would take a very long time to do it. I would rather not wait a very long time because I want to use this airplane as a platform to travel around the country and help other people with their aircraft projects or with their aircraft maintenance. So in order for me to do that, I've set up a GoFundMe page and an Amazon wish, wish list and uh, those links will be in the description of all of these RV videos. So if you feel moved enough when you watch these videos, um, if they've helped you and you feel motivated in return to help me, I'd appreciate um, your donation or uh, your purchases from the wish list. So that's it. Uh, that's the mission of the airplane. Like I said, I'd like to use it as a platform to travel to people. They can reach out to me and say, hey, I'm building an RV whatever. I'm building a Pete and Pull air camper. I'm, I'm building a stole type airplane. I, I have a certified airplane that I need some help with. What, whatever it is, um, I would like to be able to fly to their shop, to their hangar, and be with them real time, hands on, and try to help them as best I can. I might not be able to help. Um, Maybe I show up and, you know, the only thing that I can do is, is help you move a wing from one side of the shop to the other. I'm okay with that. So that's the idea. Um, and as a little thank you, as little as it is, this is uh, an RV7 elevator skin. And if you make a donation or you purchase something from my wish list, I'd like to add your name to this skin and uh, ultimately, um, hopefully, I'll have it full of names and uh, those names and the skin will be mounted at my hangar, what I call Wall of Honor, uh, just as a little recognition that these people um, were nice enough uh, to help me with my project. So that's it. Um, again, these are the RV7 videos. Uh, you might be interested in checking out my people Air Camper videos as well. But. Um, that's it. All right. Uh, that's enough uh, yip yap for now. I say we uh, get to building some RVs. Now I'm starting to fit the attachment strip that goes between the leading edge and the fuel tank. I've got my rib back in place. It's been deburred and fluted so it was nice and straight. Of course, when I had this taken out, I went ahead and I cleaned all of the um, all the metal shavings from all the drilling. Cleaned out, vacuumed out all the metal shavings from underneath the skin and on the spar. Cleaned up the flange, deburred it, fluted it so it was nice and straight. I had my strip in place. I went ahead and marked a line from the edge, the half uh, a half inch from the edge mark the line. That line now gets centered underneath the holes. You look through the holes and you can see your line. The rib is clecoed to the spar. So the way that I elected to do this with the rib fluted, it's relatively straight. It's clecoed to the spar. So I started with this hole here. I moved the strip until I got the hole or the line centered on this first hole. <clears throat> With the rib being clecoed in place, there's not a lot of movement here. So I was fairly confident that when I drilled through the skin hole into the strip, 
once I drilled this hole, it would align with the hole that I have already drilled in the rib. So I really, I just drilled really nice and slow with this first hole, and I kept making just. I kept checking to make sure that just as it broke through the strip that I could see the rib hole behind it. So as I drilled, I drilled slow, I kept checking, kept checking, drilled slow. When it finally started to go through, I could see that the hole in the rib was very, very close. And as the drill bit went through, it, it basically self-centered the hole in the rib. Then I went ahead and clear coated it. And then I skipped a hole, came up to this one, did the same thing, lined up the line on the strip. Now the rib is attached here and here, which kind of moved it in such a way that it kind of pre-aligned this next hole. When I drilled this one again, drilling at a high speed but very slow feed, as I drilled through the plate, the drill bit found the hole in the rib, kind of self-aligned it clear coat it. So I'm going to continue to do that as I go up. I'm going to align the line behind the hole, drill nice and slow, and let that just kind of find the rib, the rib hole. I think personally for me this is easier um, than the way the instructions tell you to do it. I had done the first wing the way that the instructions say. Um, and it was difficult for me to struggle with moving the rib, moving the strip, trying to keep the line aligned under the hole, trying to keep the distance from the rib web to this edge held constant, trying to hold all that constant, drill a hole without stuff moving, and then trying to walk that around, aligning lines, you know, taking measurements, that became really tedious. You almost need a second person. Doing it this way, if you do the rib first without the strip, put the rib on with your line, align the line under the holes, drill the holes, take the rib off, flute it, deburr it. Now you know the rib is straight and the holes are correct. You just fit the strip in between the two and then match drill all three. And I think for me personally that works out a little bit better. It's a little bit easier. It's not as tedious trying to mess with, you know, a bunch of moving parts and measuring and aligning. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this and um, move on. All right, so here's the finished product with the attachment strip in place. So let me recap real quick. First thing that I did was take the with the um, leading edge in place, I took this end rib, clicked it to the spar. I have the line drawn on the outside of the flange to represent the center line of where I want these holes to be drilled. Put the rib in place, clicked it, and then uh, line up that line with the holes in the skin, drill it, clicked it drill it, clico it, one hole at a time. As you do that, that takes this bent rib, you know how these are bent after they've been punched before you flute it. It pulls the rib into position as you go around and clico it. Once I had all the holes drilled and clicoed, I disassembled everything, took the rib, and deburred all the holes and fluted it so now the rib is nice and straight on its own found the uh, I think this is W what is this W423 the attachment strip found it it was already cut the size it's an inch and a half wide 32 thousandths of an inch thick and 36 and a half inches in length I checked it to be sure it was already cut to the proper size so I went ahead and deburred it. Uh, according to the instructions, I went ahead and marked the line on the outside, half inch from the edge, a half inch over. Actually, it would be from this edge. From this this edge of the strip here would be a half inch over. And then I took this rib on a bench and this strip and pre-bent this strip to the rib. Brought the rib over, 
we got it back in place. Brought the strip over, sandwiched it between the rib and the skin, lined up the, the line on the strip with the holes in the skin. I started in this corner with this Clecoed. This edge here doesn't have a whole lot of freedom to wiggle around and move. I lined it up best I could by eye. I lined up the hole with the line on the strip and then I drilled very very slowly made sure I didn't punch a new hole in the rib. I went very slow, kept checking it, kept checking it when the drill bit went through, it found the existing hole in the rib and kind of found center, kind of positioned itself, clecoed it. Then I went up a couple, made sure the line was correct, drilled nice and slow, let the drill bit find the hole in the, in the rib, clecoed it. And then I did that up one side, then I went over, went up one side, then I came back and did the holes that I had skipped. And that, for me, worked out really well. Again, I liked it better that way because with the instructions, you fit the rib, which has not been fluted because you don't know where the holes are going to be, right? When it's, a, when it's a naked rib, there are no holes in it, and it's bent from the forming process. They want you to clico it here, put it in place, fit the strip in between. You line the line with the strip with the holes on the skin, but you have no way of knowing where the rib is, especially with it being bent. It would be very difficult to wrestle with trying to get the rib straight, trying to keep this lined up, and then drill your holes, but you don't know what your edge distance is going to be with the rib because you can't see. It's just, a, to me, it was just cumbersome. I had tried, I tried that way on my first swing, and I didn't like it. It was, very, it was a real struggle. So do the rib first, that establishes all your holes, and then you straighten it by fluting, deburring, bring it back, fit the strip, fit the strip to the skin. The rib holes are already done, as long as you could match drill the skin, the strip, and the rib, you'll be fine. To me, it was easier. That's the process I used, and I like it better. Um, if I ever do another pair of wings, either for myself or for somebody else, I think I'll use this same method. So I'm going to demonstrate how I plan on making this uh, this connecting strip, if you will, between the leading edge and the fuel tank. This is, I believe, this is number part number W426 on the plans. Anyway, the uh, little holes here, these are the rivet holes that have already been drilled. Um, this is the leading edge side of the strip, so the leading edge is here, and this gets riveted in place along the uh, leading edge rib and the skin. These bigger holes were match drilled when the leading edge and the fuel tank assembly were clecoed together on the spar. Now I have to locate the holes for the nut plates, these. So I have to locate the, the rivet holes for these nut plates over top, you know, if this was over top of the hole here. So what I plan to do is uh, basically just by eye initially. I just made a little tick mark where I thought the center of the hole is. And I can show that better with this piece here, I believe. And of course, it's going to have a little bit of a glare, but I made these little black tick marks right along the center of the hole, just by eye. And then I take my ruler, and I, in effect, connect along the length of those tick marks. That gives me basically an average center line through each hole. When I do that, what I end up with are these lines here. So these lines is what I end up with. Now I can look at these individually and I can see that these look good. Um, 
this one here on the end, I don't know if that will come up, this one here looks a little off center, but that's okay. When I center punch it, I'll just ever so slightly move that center punch hole off of the line just a little bit to get it more centered along the hole. So that's kind of where I am now. I'm getting these lines laid out and I'm going to go ahead and fit the nut plate and then sight down through the nut plate holes to the line, center punch and things of that nature, but I'll get to that in a minute. So now, <clears throat> here I have the holes marked with the line, down the, roughly down the center of each hole. Now what I do is I have my, my dummy nut plate, and by that I mean, like I had explained before, I take one nut plate and I run a tap through it. What that does is it basically negates the... Um, What do I want to say? It, it negates the, um, wow, I cannot think, the holding capacity of the nut plate. So now it's just like a regular nut. You can run a screw in and out of it by hand. So what that allows me to do then, I, I put the nut plate on. I use a flathead countersunk screw. And that flat, that countersunk angle on the um, flathead screw self-centers itself in the hole since it's tapered. As I screw it down, it will self-center into the hole. I'm trying to keep this in camera as much as I can. So I just snug this a little bit. Now that's self-centered in the hole. Here, get that glare off of there. Now all I need to do is spin the nut plate around got it a little too tight just spin the nut plate around. Come on now you gotta spin tedious I know but it works really well <laughs> wow. Got it a little tight. So you get the idea. You want that snug enough to hold it, but not so tight that you can't spin it. So now all I need to do is spin the nut plate around until that line that I have drawn is centered in the holes for the nut plate rivets. So to recap, the countersink, the countersunk screw self-centers itself in the hole. And then you just align the rivet holes with the line that you've drawn. Now from here, like I always do, I take the appropriate size drill bit <clears throat> and I'll just <clears throat> I'll lay it in the hole and I'll spin it. This is not the right size drill bit. Appropriate size drill bit in the hole, spin it a couple times and that will leave an impression on your piece of aluminum exactly centered. And then, of course, the nut plate and the screw come out. You, um, and then you um, see. I just I keep drawing blanks. Wow. Take the nut plate and the screw out of the way, and then center punch your little mark that was made with the drill bit, and then you can drill these holes. You do that with each location. So once I get this one marked with the drill bit, I take it off, move it down to this hole centered on my line, mark it with the drill bit, take it off, do the next hole, and so on. Here's an example of one of the nut plates with the line not drawn exactly down the center. 
the screw is self-centering in the large hole and holding the nut plate in place, but you can see the line that I had eyeballed is not running down the center of the rivet holes in the nut plate. And that's okay as long as you have the nut plate twisted and the lines are it basically in the same location. In this, in this ex example, the line is up at the top. So you can see this hole where the line is in relation to the top of the hole and it's the same on this hole here. The line is up toward the top the same distance on each hole. So you know that this nut plate is basically in line with the edge of the material regardless of where it lies on the black line. If it was off a little bit, if I can do this one handed here. That's an exaggeration, but there you can see you can see the line in this hole, but you can't see it in this hole. And obviously you can tell by looking at it it's not straight, but you can manipulate that to get it even roughly. I think that shows it pretty good. So now I know that it's straight again and I can go ahead and mark the holes. One more thing I'd like to point out. At this point, again, I've got the screw in and this is the nut plate that I've ran a tap through so it's basically acts as a nut. Now there's no real anti-vibration properties to it. Um, at this point you may be thinking why can't you just snug up the nut or snug the screw tight enough and then go ahead and drill these holes rather than marking them and then center punching them and then drilling them. I chose not to do that because one you'd have to have this screw pretty tight to make sure that this doesn't rotate and that's gonna start to interfere with the hole the hole itself uh, may end up starting to get deformed when you tighten this enough to hold the nut plate from spinning. I didn't like that. And also, you start running a drill bit through these holes in the nut plate. When you start doing multiple locations, these holes in the nut plate are going to get bigger and bigger and they start to get an odd shape and they may elongate. So by the time you get down to your last few holes, you may have a lot of movement, a lot of chatter, you know, the holes in the nut plate are bigger than they need to be and it could potentially cause issues. So I just choose to go ahead, as I say, put it on, mark it with the drill bit and then move it. And you can see these are the indications that I'm talking about that are left with the drill bit. And then I'll just come back and center punch each of those and then drill it. So here's the finished product. This is the W the W426 attached strip between the fuel tank and the leading edge. Now, I've read the instructions multiple times and the way that I interpret the instructions they specifically state that you are to dimple the screw hole and you are to dimple the um, the nut plate rivet holes here. So what I ended up doing since I dimpled the plate I also dimpled the nut plate to fit the dimple in the W426. Now dimpling the nut plate distorts the nut plate. It kind of puts a curve in it. So then I had to take the nut plate after I dimpled it, put it in a vise and squeeze it uh, to flatten it back out. But I did find that doing so very slightly changed the distance from uh, rivet hole to rivet hole on the nut plate itself. So now the nut plate seemed to kind of float around on top of the dimples that are on the 426. So with the nut plate sitting on here, it kind of waffled around and it wasn't very secure. So long story short, what I ended up doing was taking a screw and cutting it really short so that I can thread it in and out of here by hand 
it wasn't long enough to fully engage the, the back part of the nut plate so it, it didn't have a lot of holding power. And I just threaded it by hand and tightened it down so that it basically held the nut plate centered and then I was able to squeeze the rivets. I had done this same method on the other wing with the dimpling and the dimpling of the nut plates and the strip worked out fine. It, the, the fit on the wing is really nice. So I went ahead and did it this way, the same way on this one. I don't know if you can get away with uh, dimpling this hole and then machine countersinking these two and then just leaving the nut plate flat without dimpling it. But like I said, the way that I read the instructions, they specifically state to dimple these rivet holes as well. So if you dimple those, I would imagine you have to dimple the nut plate. Otherwise, the nut plate would just sit high on top of the dimples that are in this. So anyway, there it is. Um, it's finished, it's completely dimpled, and it's ready to install. Hey everybody, it's me again. I just wanted to say thanks for checking out my video. And like I said in the intro, if, uh, if you find these videos helpful and useful and you're moved enough to want to in return help me with my project, my GoFundMe link and my Amazon wish list link is in the description of each of these videos. And again, if, uh, if you do make a donation or a purchase, uh, I'll add your name to this uh, elevator skin and, and it will be displayed on my wall of honor at my hangar. So that's it. Uh, thanks for coming by. I, I really do appreciate the donations and um, hopefully when this aircraft is finished, uh, we can meet in person and I will be able to help you or anybody else who needs help with their project and um, we'll see what happens. All right. Thanks again and uh, we'll see you in the next video.